Hey everyone, Matt Pisarsik from RazorEmporium.com coming at you today for another edition of Double Edge Razor Shootout. We're gonna rapid fire test a bunch of double edge razor blades and kind of try to compare and contrast how they feel in one setting, one shave, trying to shave this whole face with all these different brands of blades. Let's get started. All right, we are all lathered up with Razor Emporium Barbershop, part of the small batch series of soap we make in-house. It's been our go-to for over a year now for testing and reviews. Um, I did have the aid of my secret ingredient, the Razor Emporium pre-shave bar, this obelisk, this monolith from Stanley Kubrick's mind um, is a awesome way to make any soap jump in volume, any soap, get bigger, get creamier, get, get uh, more hydrating, it's great for your skin. So yeah, we, we've sold hundreds and hundreds, can't sell enough of these guys. All right, uh, so the subject of today's video, as I said in the intro, is we're gonna be doing a part two. So we did part one a few months ago, and we heard one resounding piece of feedback in all of the comments. And that piece of feedback was, hey, you missed this blade. Hey, what about this blade? What about that brand? And I, I was like, we did 25 blades in a single shave. Was that not enough? <laughs> um, no, it wasn't. It was not enough. <laughs> so rather than try to fit even more, we said, let's do a part two. So today's part two. Um, I'm not gonna waste any more time talking. We're just gonna get going. We're gonna roll. So the, the, object, the object of the video is to rapid fire in one setting with the same lather, same conditions, try different blades and just try to compare and contrast. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start with one of my favorites. This is the Persona Med Prep. It's also referred to as Persona Lab Blue. It does not come in a five pack dispenser. These come in long cardboard sleeves from, from Persona. We get them direct, so if you order from us, they're not gonna come in some big dispenser. Again, these are meant for hospitals, or places where like, you have to have a procedure done and they need to shave off hair from an area, let's say your arm. And uh, that, yes, yeah, so, but you know, they're made in USA. They're one of the only blades left made in America. Again, for our neutral kind of Goldilocks razor experience, we're gonna use a fat handle tech from Gillette. This has been revamped in nickel in our shop. Ding. Uh, and I'm using this as my baseline because I use these blades all the time at home, so I'm gonna kind of be able to know where I'm at to then compare and contrast with the next blades will be rapid fire changing. I don't have my assistant with me today, so the, the rapid fire may uh, not be so rapid. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, literally effortless. It's as if no blades even in there. I love the Persona Med Prep. And now we're gonna switch. <laughs> I've been curious to try the Bic Chrome Platinum. We just got these for the store. These are made in Greece. Yes, Bic Chrome Platinum. Yes, Bic just like the pens. You ask yourself, what does a pen manufacturer know about making blades? I don't know. But Gillette at one point uh, used to own Papermate, if you can believe it. So if the Persona uh, Lab Blues, I'm gonna give them like a four and a half out of five. I love them. In terms of how, uh, on my aggressiveness scale, how close, how comfortable, how effortless, stuff like that. This Bic immediately, I can tell you, is not, is not there like the other guy was. I'd give it a three and a half. I'm gonna grab a 
Lord. We'll save the vintage for the end. We'll grab the Lord. These are made in Egypt. Lord, super stainless. Now, from my recollection, it's been a long time since I've used Lord. These are on the more dull, kind of, you know, less aggressive scale. Kind of considered a mild blade. Let's see if it lives up to that. Yeah. I'd give it, honestly, even a little bit less than the Bic. Or a little bit more than the Bic. I'd give it a 3.75. <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to fool you guys all with these quarter ratings. I could say that the, the, the Bics were three and these are three and a half. Maybe that'll be easier. These are the Dorco in the red and white packaging, the 10 pack. Um, Dorcos, I believe, are made in South Korea, I believe. The stainless Dorco. Very similar to the Lord. I'd give it the same rating as the Lord. So like the three and a half. It's nice, it's clean, not, not too much tugging or pulling. Okay, we are gonna now do the new Platinum Dorco, the ST300. I don't, I think these are different. They, they, let's find out. Made in Vietnam, I was wrong. Dorco, the Republic of Korea. So they're a Korean company, but they make them in Vietnam. Interesting, and the wrapper is different. So this one's got an orange wrapper. This one's got a kind of a black wrapper. The writing on it. So let's take a look at uh, the difference here. Gosh, it looks identical. I wonder if it's like the feather five pack, 10 pack kind of thing. No, a little more tugging. I would give it a, a three instead of a three and a half. Feels more like the Bic. And that's the benefit of doing this so fast, guys, and, and comparing them, just doing a couple of strokes, because I'm not, I'm not like committed to them, like I have to use this, I paid for it, like, oh well. Um, and I get to immediately feel that result difference. We're gonna move on, we're almost done with all the moderns, we're gonna go to vintage. The carbon steel double-edge blade from Treat. Treat has a bunch of different blades, this is their carbon steel. I know a lot of guys who like this blade because it's one of the only carbon steel left on the market. Some people say that carbon steel is softer, uh, more forgiving than stainless steel, so it doesn't have such a harsh feel. These are made in Pakistan. Treat, treat yourself. Anyone know the reference to that phrase? T tell me in the comments below. We'll see if you're really, uh, really a cool kid. Treat carbon steel, and yeah, they're, bla they're uh, blue, kind of blackish, like they're like blued almost, like a gun. Wow, that's my favorite so far. That's up there with the med prep, it feels really similar. I may just finish the shave off with that when we're done. And speaking of being done, I don't want to have the performance of my lather be a variable, so we're literally just gonna kind of quickly refresh, because I've been sitting here talking just to make sure that everything's nice and hydrated, including my shirt. And um, I'm not, you know, comparing a, a dry lather with a moist lather, hydrated lather. Okay, I think that was all the modern ones left that we had to try. Now, again, these are based off of blades we carry in the store. That changes sometimes. Like, we just got the Bix, um, so that's a new blade. And, there's more blades out there. There's Big Ben and there's other blades that we don't carry at the moment. We may carry. And it's not like this is every blade on the market. There's probably 100 blades on the market, guys. Okay, these are some vintage ones I got from Argentina. These are Palcon Cavex. All right, so we are going to use that. Look at this weird cutout it has. These are definitely very vintage. These look like from the 50s. Weird cutout. Ow. Ow, <laughs> no, these are like a one or a one and a half. These are very tuggy and pulley. If you're someone who has super mild skin, or my, I should say a mild beard, and yeah, not, not for me. Nope, I'm just gonna stop right there before I get myself ingrowns. Uh, we'll, just get, we'll just get them out of the way. This is a different packaging, maybe it's the same thing. Another Pal Concavix from Argentina. Same weird cutout, different material though. This one um, is goldish in color and this one's like this bluish in color. So let's see if, maybe the gold makes it more efficient. Just adds that certain something for that special someone. 
That's another one, guys. That's worse. <laughs> if that one was a one, this is a half. <laughs> that one felt like it was just tugging the hair out. I am going to put that aside and never think about it again. Okay, we're rapid firing going through these. This is a Argentinian blade, again, also vintage uh, from Industria Argentina, probably from the 30s or 40s. You can tell the uh, effect that Gillette had because they're also going for that blue blade look. So I'm guessing 40s. You know, there's something to be said about using an 80 year old blade. Maybe I should just be happy. No. No. <laughs> That's also going to be the half. That was painful. Not going to lie. Uh, last one from the vintage, I know I've made a complete mess over here, is this Gillette. Now these were in a cardboard box and I took one out and it was inversely wrapped. It was wrapped inside out, which is really bizarre. Uh, and then the wax paper, I could actually see the Gillette. This is a super, st super stainless steel blade. And these don't have the date code on them, which is weird, but they are made in Argentina. Now I know I like the American super stainless. These are like from the 60s. Let's see if I like the Argentinian ones. Hopefully they had the same sharpening processes and, and whatnot. We're gonna give that like a two and a half. It's definitely a step up from my other vintage ones, but it's not even as, as pleasurable as some of these modern blades. Honestly, I'm gonna go back to that treat. I thought it felt very similar to the Persona Med Prep. Maybe it's a four and a quarter, and that one's a four and a half, you know? It was definitely very comfortable. These numbers, as you're seeing, are not empirical. They're just my observations. You should do your own test. Get a bunch of blades. We have a, a complete sample pack. That's one of everything we have at the moment. And do your own comparison. Sure, it'll cost you a little bit of money. Maybe it'll cost you 40 or 50 bucks for a, a sample pack that has you know, 25, 30 different blades in it. But what are you gonna get out of that? you may find you like a blade that you never knew. Maybe a blade that's cheaper or more available than one that you thought was your only special one you could use. And yeah, another kind of thing to note is that my initial impression of these blades is just that, it's an initial impression. What if you used a blade for a solid, you know, week? You'll probably get to know it better than if you do two strokes with it, like I just did. Uh, speaking of, I'm just gonna quickly go over my skin because as I've been sitting here, I just wanna make sure I have a, a nice layer and really just clean up and not miss any spots. I was going on all these little weird rows and areas, so. We're just gonna do a nice general cleanup pass. And my, you know, what I think of a blade may be completely different than what you think of a blade or someone else does. You know, there's no, I, I, I kind of jokingly say this in emails to customers, there's no international consortium of blade sharpness judges or ratings or something. And even within double-edged blades, you're gonna be shocked to hear this. If you took a pair of calipers, you can get slight variations of measurement of these blades, meaning how long they are, how wide they are, how thin they are. All those can affect the way it shaves as well. I just had someone write me an email asking about the blade exposure of one of my razors, one of the Rex razors, you know, kind of, if you look at the cap and look at the guard and the intersection of the plane of shaving and how far out does that blade protrude. I said, well, based off what blade? A feather? a Mercur, a Dorco, go measure them. There are slight differences. Now they're very, very slight. You may say it doesn't affect the shaving. Well, I think we've learned one thing as wet shavers, nuances do affect the outcome. So it's all about finding the right razor, 
that works with the, you know, the handle that you have, the, the razor handle. Works with your skin type. It, it also delivers consistent results again and again. I, I, uh, I love the feeling of a feather blade for maybe one pass. <laughs> I may say, yeah, it's a five out of five. It's the sharpest blade in the market. I think most of you would agree with that. But for my skin, if I do an entire shave and then I try to do it day after day, week after week, my face is just left too raw. So it's kind of like that fine balance of performance and longevity and kind of the, the track record. Is that lather in my beard or am I just, am I getting white hair? <laughs> I think I'm just getting white hair, guys. I'm getting old. <laughs> no, it's mostly lather, some, some white hair. Um, you gotta find the one that delivers a consistent result for you again and again, that you can go to, that doesn't leave you feeling raw, that has uh, you know, the magic secret sauce for you and your beard and your face. So I'm gonna finish up with a little splash of Razor Emporium Barbershop. All right. That feels nice. I, I'm looking at my mess and I, I'm actually happy. <laughs> it brings me joy to see all this because this is progress. This is experimentation. This is trial and error. This is not reading a review that some guy left on some chat room about his perception of a blade. Even though I'm now the guy for you, it's my perception. I learned something today. I like these, these treat carbon steels. I, I, I never thought much about them. I like them. Still thought my persona med prep was the best. So I'm glad we started with that. Um, what do you think of my ratings? What would you agree with? What would you disagree with? What are some other blades that Razor Emporium needs to stock so we can do a part three? I wanna do a part three for you guys of even more blades, rapid fire test. Let me know in the comments below. And if you do leave a comment, you're entered into win this, the official Razor Emporium black and blue t-shirt. That's all I got for you guys. I feel great uh, overall. The, the, the vintage blades that were tugging, I stopped. You saw me, I was like, Shh, nope. Uh, but I'm feeling great overall, good shave. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you next time at Razor Emporium for all things vintage shaving. Thanks guys.